Have you ever wondered what the oldest recipe in the world might be? Picture a time when our ancestors first discovered fire and concocted their initial meals. Food, a cornerstone of human civilization, has been a powerful cultural symbol and a necessity since time immemorial. It tells stories of survival, celebration, and innovation. These ancient recipes are not just instructions for preparing food, but they're also historical documents that reveal our ancestors' way of life. Join us as we delve into the culinary past and explore some of the oldest recipes known to man. Our first stop takes us back to the cradle of civilization, ancient Sumer. Picture this, a society that flourished over 4,000 years ago in what is now southern Iraq. The Sumerians were a people of many firsts. They developed one of the earliest forms of writing, established complex city-states, and yes, they even had time to cook up some culinary magic. Their contribution to the culinary world is significant, and it is here that we find the oldest recorded recipe. But don't get too excited just yet. It's not a recipe for a sumptuous stew or a delectable dessert. Instead, it's a recipe for a beverage we all know and love. Beer. That's right, the Sumerians were brewing beer long before it became the drink of choice at ballgames and barbecues. This recipe was found inscribed on a clay tablet, a common medium for record-keeping in ancient times. The tablet, dated back to 1800 BC, outlines a simple process for brewing beer using barley, a staple grain in Sumerian agriculture. The beer, known as kas, was a vital part of Sumerian society. It was used not just for merrymaking, but also as a form of currency and a dietary staple. It was a different sort of brew from what we're used to today, often thicker and sometimes even consumed with a straw. But why record a recipe for beer? Well, the Sumerians believed in documenting everything from business transactions to epic tales, and beer, being an essential part of their daily life and culture, was no exception. This ancient beer recipe is more than just a culinary artifact. It provides a glimpse into the Sumerian way of life, their values, and their ingenuity. So, the next time you raise a glass of your favorite brew, remember the ancient Sumerians. They were the pioneers of many things, including the art of brewing. Their contribution to the culinary world is a testament to their innovative spirit and their love for good food and drink. So, the oldest recipe we know of is for a beer. Cheers to that! Scene script. Fast forward a few millennia, let's explore the gastronomic wonders of the Roman Empire. The heart of ancient civilization, the Roman Empire, was also a hub for culinary innovation. From the grand feasts of the wealthy to the simple meals of the common folk, Roman cuisine was as diverse as the empire itself. But today, we're going to delve into some of the more extravagant dishes, as detailed in the oldest known Roman cookbook, the Apicius. Named after the famed epicure Marcus Gavius Apicius, this culinary tome offers a fascinating glimpse into the dining habits of the Roman elite. Among its recipes, two stand out for their sheer audacity, the flamingo tongue and the stuffed dormouse. Yes, you heard right. Flamingo tongue was a delicacy among Roman gourmands, Described as having a unique flavor, it was often served at lavish banquets. The recipe itself is quite simple. The tongues are boiled with a mixture of herbs and spices, then served with a sauce made from pepper, lovage, and a dash of honey. Moving on to something even more peculiar, the stuffed dormouse. This dish was a favorite in Roman times, especially in the region of Liguria. The dormice were fattened up with a diet of nuts and fruits, then stuffed with a mixture of minced meat, pepper, soaked bread, and dormouse meat. Once stuffed, they were roasted and served with a honey and poppy seed glaze. You might be thinking, who in their right mind would eat that? But remember, the Romans had a different perspective on food. They valued novelty and extravagance, and these dishes certainly fit the bill. But the Apicius isn't just a collection of outlandish recipes. It also offers a wealth of information on Roman cooking techniques, ingredients, and food preservation. It's a testament to the culinary ingenuity of the Romans, pushing the boundaries of what was considered edible and delicious. It seems the Romans had a flair for the exotic when it came to their meals. As we venture into the Middle Ages, we encounter a culinary masterpiece, the Form of Curie. This fascinating manuscript, penned around the end of the 14th century, is an extraordinary collection of medieval English recipes, offering a rich and diverse glimpse into the culinary culture of the time. The form of curie, or the method of cookery in modern English, was written by the master chefs of King Richard II. It features over 190 recipes, each one a unique testament to the creativity and adaptability of medieval cooks. Despite the limited resources and rudimentary cooking equipment of the time, 
these culinary craftsmen managed to create dishes bursting with flavors, textures, and colors, a testament to their ingenuity. One such notable recipe is the blank mang, a dish that sounds quite unassuming, but is in fact a delightful concoction of capon or pike, rice, and almond milk. This was not a simple stew, but a dish that involved careful preparation and cooking techniques. The meat was first parboiled, then simmered with rice and almond milk, creating a creamy rich dish that was both comforting and sophisticated. To add complexity, the dish was often finished with sugar and violets, a combination that would have been quite exotic and luxurious in those times. Though it might seem strange to our modern palates, blank mang and other recipes from the form of curry highlight the adventurous spirit of medieval cuisine. They experimented with sweet and savory combinations, played with textures, and were not afraid to use ingredients that were considered exotic or luxurious. The Middle Ages may not have been known for their cuisine, but they certainly had some intriguing dishes. This period in history, often associated with hardship and struggle, also gave rise to culinary creativity and innovation that laid the foundation for many of the cooking techniques and flavor profiles we enjoy today. So next time you're savoring a creamy risotto or a comforting stew, remember the medieval chefs who were pioneers in their own right. The Renaissance, a time of great cultural and culinary innovation. During this period, the world of food experienced a seismic shift as the culinary arts began to be recognized as a profession. One of the most influential cookbooks to emerge from this era was the Opera dell'arte del Cucinare, penned by Bartolomeo Scapi, who was considered the personal chef to popes and emperors. Scapi's monumental work, published in 1570, is often hailed as one of the first comprehensive guidebooks for professional cooks. With over 1,000 recipes, it was a sweeping exploration of the culinary arts, diving into everything from selecting the best ingredients to the intricate presentation of dishes. One of the most intriguing recipes found in Scapi's magnum opus is the Torta di Carziofi, a Renaissance version of an artichoke pie. This dish was a perfect blend of simplicity and sophistication, much like the Renaissance itself. The recipe called for artichokes to be boiled, seasoned with sweet and strong spices, and then baked in a pie with a rich, buttery crust. The result was a pie that was both rustic and elegant, a testament to the culinary innovation of the Renaissance era. But the Opera dell'arte del Cucinari was more than just a cookbook. It was a testament to the cultural shift that was taking place during the Renaissance. Food was no longer just about sustenance. It was about art, expression, and creativity. It was about bringing people together, fostering a sense of community and celebration. From the kitchens of the noble families to the bustling markets, the Renaissance was a time when the culinary arts truly began to flourish. It was a period when food transcended the mundane and became a symbol of cultural identity and artistic expression. It was a time when the simple act of cooking was transformed into a profession and the kitchen became a stage for culinary innovation. The Renaissance, truly a period of gastronomic revolution. We've embarked on a fascinating journey through culinary history. We've tasted the legacy of the ancient Sumerians, who left us the world's oldest written recipes on clay tablets. Their hearty stews and breads, baked over open fires, speak of a time when food was not just sustenance, but a sacred ritual. We then ventured into the lavish feasts of the Roman Empire, where the rich and diverse flavors of dishes like garum and Lucanian sausage revealed an era of decadence and culinary exploration. These dishes, meticulously recorded in the Apicius cookbook, continue to inspire modern cuisine. Our taste buds were then transported to the Middle Ages, a time when food took on symbolic meanings. The elaborate subtleties, a meat jelly dish, became a spectacle of medieval banquets, showcasing the inventiveness of chefs of the era. Next, we savored the culinary innovations of the Renaissance. The period's food, like the rich and creamy tortelli, mirrored its art, marked by creativity and a departure from traditional norms. Each of these epics, with their unique ingredients, techniques, and flavors, has contributed to the smorgasbord that is global cuisine. They have left indelible marks influencing the way we cook, eat, and perceive food. So, the next time you enjoy your favorite dish, take a moment to consider its place in the grand tapestry of culinary history.